Greetings, well, hello everyone, and with the IAE in full swing, I thought I would do just a quick CCU chain guide for Star Citizen, um, just to help everyone, anyone that was new and interested in the game, there is a lot of hype around CitizenCon around IAE time, and to anyone that is new, this information, and just sort of someone to sort of show you the ropes, help hold your hand as you do your first couple of steps in, could be a lot of help. So, people that have been around Star Citizen for a long time, I expect 90% of this will be teaching Grant to suck eggs. But this is mainly aimed at the people that are roughly new to Star Citizen, and this it might be for this whole concept might be foreign to them. Now, with that all in mind, I want to start things off with saying that I do not recommend anyone goes past starter ships at all. All you need is a as a starter ship and in fact the new starship they're showing here the uh, Sulin Sulin I'm not 100% sure how you're meant to pronounce it looks like it is one hell of a great starter ship for people that are interested in exploring I was expecting it to be a lot more expensive I was expecting it to get a lot more alien tax once uh, I'd seen what it was and when it was leaked and uh, it's a combo pack with the uh, combo pack with the game, starter pack for the game. Looks like a great combo pack. If you can buy that and that's all you need, that's all you ever need and I would recommend it as your only ship if you're like wanting a starter ship and you were interested in exploring. It seems to be a starter ship that has a slight leaning towards exploring. Um, I'm not really sure how much cargo it's got, but it will be able to do cargo missions too. It looks like it's got a good amount of firepower and defences, so it will be able to do other stuff too than exploring. It's just, I know it's got a lot of fuel, I know it's really fast and manoeuvrable, I know it's got bed and other utilities on board for you to walk around. It looks like a mwah, brilliant, perfect, advanced starter. And if you're interested in exploring, as I was saying, there we go, there's your ship that you need to get. Um, because it doesn't lock you into exploring, but if you're just interested, there you go. Right, but we're getting distracted and we're getting sidetracked here. Um, yeah, I do not recommend you go past your starter ship unless you fulfill one very, very, very big caveat. And that is, you want to keep pumping more money into the game. You want to try and help out and you really, really believe in this project and you want to donate more money to help the project continue. They're already getting lots of money and they're no need, no risk whatsoever. But I'm a strong believer in supporting things you love and like. And um, I've been known to buy... Like games at full price or like re-released on different consoles or whatever just because I really wanted to support that franchise like one of the things is when Digimon started coming back over to the audience over here outside of Japan I, start, I was like shut up and take my money like because they said one of the main reasons they didn't want to like uh, release products over here is because they didn't think it was financially viable they didn't think there was a market for it and then we kind of proved them wrong with a lot of our fan stuff so like oh okay we'll start releasing stuff over here so the first thing i did is i made sure when they did start releasing stuff i put the money down so that they could see that we are interested and we did want it and then they kept on releasing it to us and this kind of the same way i've used star citizen so if you want to keep giving money to Star Citizen, that is when you go past your starter ship. And the best way to get bang for buck when you're going past your starter ship is CCU chains. Um, yeah, I'm not. I would never want anyone just to fork out like a thousand pounds here for a ship, a thousand pounds there for a ship. And I don't think it's a good idea for anyone to do that. Um, I, just, the way I do it is it's uh, every payday or, well, Every payday, I generally put like twenty pounds aside for uh, when one of these big events happen, like these sales. Back in the day, what I used to do is every payday, I used to just go in and buy like an upgrade or something or something with that twenty pounds. Now I put it away, and when it gets to times like this, that's when I then bring all that money out and I invest it in the game, um, because you get so much more bang for buck doing it at times like this when you got the sales, you got the war bond upgrades and all that sort of stuff, which is what we're here to talk about today. So, now that we've spent four minutes talking about 
why you really, really need to be the right type of person to go into these upgrade chains. No one else, I'm expecting no one else to go into these upgrades. You do not need to, just get your starter ship. You'll, if you want to play on the bigger ships, there is lots of people. There is more people with bigger ships than there is people to crew them. So we definitely do not have a big ship shortage in the community. If you want to play on the big ships, you'll be able to find an org that will satisfy your particular uh, interest gameplay-wise and have at it. The only re valid reason is if you want to continue to invest in the development of Star Citizen further above and beyond. So now that we've really nailed that home for about five minutes, let's get in to the CCU chains and what they are. So um, if we come down here on the site and uh, like for example we'll look at the Sulin, Sulin here we can go to upgrades and let's say if we just go to all ships Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Say right now, all we had was a where's a cheaper starter ship? Do 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 do. Say we had a cutter scout. We were interested in this. Boom! You just buy the upgrade, and there you go. You would then. I would advise, unless you're 100% sure you no longer wanted the cutter scout and you 100% wanted this, or you 100% want to play this in game now, I would only recommend you apply it then at that point. Um. I'll show you the, my chains here in a second. I've got on the go in a minute. But yeah, just buy it. It's a chain. And it will upgrade your uh, ship. So whatever pack you have. So say you bought... This is a pack. And uh, if we get rid of this. And we get rid of this. And we just keep scrolling down. Say da -da 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 -da, you bought that pack that we were on about earlier. That is a really good deal. So anyone interested in getting it. But um, you're now wanting to upgrade past this. Um, and you didn't like the exploring, you want to just get straight into combat, boom. You can then upgrade that. And everything you get in that pack, so your insurance, your uh, uh, starting money, your game package, all that will always be saved. It will always be saved. So, you'll get everything that's already in this pack and it's literally just the ship. So even if you have a skin in there for the Sulin, you will still have that skin. Even though you don't have the ship anymore, you will still have that skin. So if you ever bought another Sulin or you buy one in-game, you'd still be able to apply that ship. If you had LTI on your Sulin, you would still have it when you upgrade to the Arrow. Even though the Arrow doesn't come with insurance, it now will retain the insurance from this one. So this is how you slowly upgrade your change. You chip away at getting the bigger ships bit by bit over time and you can save yourself an absolute fortune. Let's get into the saving yourself a fortune now. If we uh, come back out of this and we just go wait into... I think it's today's deal is in these people here. And we can see there is the Cartu Owl, which is uh, the Nox... The Santoki Eye, and uh, we can also take a look at Gatak as well because there is the railing. So, good CCUs to pick up today if you're wanting to save yourself money on CCU chains. This is ones I would recommend right now. So, if we go to all ships. Now, these is where you ones you're building your CCU chains, I would recommend you sit on it. So we can take a look at the railing, and I'll explain why the railing's a good idea right in a minute. Now, the Santok AI would have been an okay idea before, but it's not that great than now. You want to go from a ship that is always available, and the closest one that is always available, there isn't really one that close. So you also want to keep it as cheap as possible. So we've got the Banu Defender. I don't think the Banu Defender will be going up in price anytime soon. So there, boom, boom. You pick up a £5 upgrade from the Banu Defender to the railing, and then you sit on it. And when the railing is released, the railing will probably go up. Now, there's two ways you get money off. There's war bonds, and then there's when ships' prices go up. Ships always go up in price when they're released. And I think it's almost always roughly 25% they go up. So, um, I know... All the times a ship has been released and I've worked it out, it has been roughly 25%. Now, I don't know if that's been the case for every ship CIG has ever released. And I doubt that will be the case for every ship they ever release from now forever. But I just do know they always go up and it will always be 
quite significantly. It's normally, as I said, it's, every time I've worked it out, it's been roughly 25%. And so let me just pull up a, a calculator. I'll bring over the calculator app. So we have 225. Now we times that by 1.25. There we go. I estimate it's going to go up to 280 quid roughly. Maybe give or take 20 pounds, it's going to go up to 280 quid. That's pretty much a given. So there you're seeing you're getting 60 pounds off. Or 60 dollars off your CCU chain now. Now if you and that's for five that only costs you a five dollar upgrade. So if you're able to get for every fat you can see how quickly I shouldn't have closed that calculator. Calculator, we bring it back. So uh, so that was it cost you five, but it was giving you what an eighty no sixty. So 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 for Every so, if you want an eight hundred pound ship, if we clear that away, boom, 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 an eight hundred pound ship, and you get CCU chains that valuable all the way up. Uh, divide that by uh, sixty-five times. Would it be sixty-five times five? I can't remember. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. What we'll do, what we'll do is we'll just equal that, just to get rid of that. We will do uh, 65. Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. 65. I forgot what I was going to do now. Divided by 5. So for every five, so if we wanted, so 800 divided by 13. So we could get like an 800, if you do it with CCU chains, all that valuable, you'd get an 800 pound ship for 61 pounds, which is not going to happen because then you're going to need to add the cost of the starter ship, which uh, we'll just say was a plus 40. And then uh, you're not going to get as good a deal on all your CCUs as that. That would be a very good one to add to your CCU chain. But the majority of them normally save me 20, 30. So then we could just times that by 2. And just roughly, yeah. Like, it, it's not outlandish to get, like, an $800 ship for 200 um, I don't think I've been that good on all of mine. Um, but I've not been too far off. If you add up the cost of all my CCUs... And all the ships I've got at the moment, I think it comes to like a 1,800. And then if you add all the money I've put into the game over like the five years I've been here, five, six years, it comes to about 1,000. So I have got nearly 50%. So as you said, I've not been, I, I've not had done this to perfection by any means of the sort. You can get them cheaper than I've managed. But as I said, like if the longer you wait, the more CCU chains you add, the more money you will save. I've not been as perfect. I've uh, had uh, some. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I've had some. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, like I've had times where I've uh, used and put money in just to get an upgrade that wasn't saving me money and stuff like that, just because I was hadn't had to spend the money on at that point in time and I wasn't being as patient as you could be so if you built it with just this is like every step of the way is a CCU kind of thing you can get at least 50% off like at that point but as I said I wouldn't be surprised if some people got 75% off I've heard of people having like uh, Carax for like $150 and like and that was just with one IAE just doing it like really smart the way they did their CCUs. And I think they had a couple left over from before. So it was nearly just one IAE's worth of uh, CCUs. Which is amazing because the Carrick is like a $600 ship. And you're getting it for 150 now. That's like, that's like the original Kickstarter back in the day prices. Which is just insane. So, right. We'll show you the other type of CCUs which are really good now. Um... Ba, 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 ba. That's the railing. And every day at the IAE, you'll get one of these as well. And today is down here, and it is the Santoki Eye. So view offer, and it's, gee, it's got a little bit there saying special upgrade offer in stock. These are war bonds. So you can see the 
it's gonna be a as though it's a 205 upgrade, but it's, yeah. So then we're gonna want to find, if we go to all ships, scroll down, we'll find the closest to 205. So I think this will be a $15 saving us upgrade. There, the A1 Spirit. Boom, you can get, you want to try and get a ship that's always available here, because if you're sitting on it, you can then upgrade to it at any point. But what you really, really want to do is you really want to get an upgrade, as like another War Bond to the A1 Spirit. So again, here, this would cost me £4.80, which will, it's $5, basically. It cost me $5, but I'd get a $20 upgrade. So for every $5 I was investing, I was getting $20 worth of ship out of it kind of thing. Um, and I know they're all pixels, they're all technically worthless, so I'm not really getting a $20, like, I'm not really saving $15. It's just I'm trying to make the money I'm investing go as far as possible. So this would be another one that would be really good. Um, so actually, this would actually stream really well together. Remember how before I was saying, don't get the Santoki Eye? Actually, no. Still don't get the Santoki Eye if you're doing the railing. Because the Santoki Eye is not out yet as well. So this is an insanely good... Don't, like, forget what we were talking about the railing. Definitely don't get the railing. Um, that, I was, the railing, I want to leave it in because it's still a good way to show you. Uh, talk about it separately. How it was a really good one. Because... The railing uh, isn't released yet. This one has both. This one's not released yet. And you can get that. So this one would be really good for people. In fact, I might pick this one up myself. Um, because this ship's going to go up by the roughly 25% too. From the 220. Because it's not released yet. And you're getting it at a war bond price. So that is mwah, chef's kiss. And it's coming out very soon. So this one will be getting... Yeah, this is an amazing one to pick up. If you're picking one up today, definitely pick this up. A $5 upgrade that is going to save you about... Eight, get you $80 worth of ship. Easy. Easy. Um, yes, yeah, so that is an amazing one to get today. Right, so now that I've showed you the two types of CCUs you buy... This is how I keep mine organized. So I'll go back to here again now. But if we come out, come back, uh, da, 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 da. just go to here. Account, uh, my hangar. And da, 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 da. all, if we just go just to upgrades, we can come in here and we can see some of the upgrades I've got sitting in my, so you can see there's war bonds, War Bond, that one's just because it's not released yet. Uh, Arrow to Storm, that was when it was originally announced. So that one will probably be worth quite a bit for me to me soon. I'll need to check out soon. So you can see I'm sitting on War Bonds and I've got a couple of pages of just uh, upgrades here. Um, but it's quite hard to keep track of it all in your head here. So if we come to my fleet here, you can see what my plans are currently. So as you see here, I've got the ship I've got at the moment. I've got the ship I plan to have eventually for when the game is released and if it's finished and if it's not here. So this is just how I keep it all structured in my head so I don't go mad and forget things as well. Um, as you see, if you just have one CCU chain, it's not really hard to keep in track of. But could you imagine, imagine what this was like back before these four were finished? Yeah, it was pretty just all over the place. Okay. And then down here you can see here's the plans I have for the CCUs I have bought. So at the moment one of my ships is a Corsair. I don't plan for it to be a Corsair forever. I plan for it to one day be an Orion. Um, I don't have an upgrade for the Corsair to upgrade to anything at the moment. So I'm really going to be looking to fill in some of the chains here between here and here. Because there is nothing here. But when I get to the Retaliator, I have a Retaliator to an Eclipse. I have an Eclipse to a Caterpillar. I have a Caterpillar to a Starfighter Gemini. And then I don't have a Starfighter Gemini to a Crucible. But that is one I will be picking up. Uh, if I've got spare money, this uh, IAE, I'm definitely going to be picking that up. Because it is just a £10 CCU. And it is perfect. Um, it is a great... The Crucible, as you see, is one of the ships I plan to have in-game. And yeah, it is brilliant. So yeah, and 
so on and so on. It's crucible to C2, to the Prowler, to the 600i Explorer, and then there's a gap between the 600i Explorer to the Orion. And I could always take some of these CCUs out of here and add them to this one down here or to this one here if I ever chop and change my plans, but this is just what my plan is at the moment. So this is how I keep it structured. The last thing I want to talk about is applying your CCUs. You may notice I pretty much have them all applied up to the top one uh, possible at the moment. So the Corsair is the highest in its level, the Hull C is the highest until it's so on and so on. But say uh, I'd already upgraded this Corsair to the Retaliator, I can sit on the Retaliator. I do not need to apply these upgrades and in fact I recommend you don't unless you really need to. Um, because once you apply it, that's it set in stone. You can't undo it. You can't trade. You can only trade the full pack in. If you don't like it, you've got to trade the full pack in. And that's you wasting all your upgrades, all your savings you've made along the way. Um, I recommend you upgrade to something you want to fly at the moment. Or something you want to test out at the moment. And then you sit on it and you sit on it and... Um, you have all this saved and you can apply them at any time um, like the Orion is good. It is a good idea to have an Orion sitting in your even though it's not released sitting in your hangar at the moment because it gives you access to multiple ships and if you want access to its loaner ships it is a valid reason to apply to it now but you've got to be have your heart set in stone that you want that Orion because if you don't want that Orion and it ends up sucking. Those loner ships will go away one day. So you've got to have your heart set in stone if you wanted to have that sitting there in your um, hangar. Uh, yeah, that's really pretty much, I think that wraps pretty much everything up. That is, um, it took a wee bit longer to go through everything than I thought it would. But that is just really like all the stuff you need to try and understand. And um if you only take one thing away from it, it is Warbond CCUs. Always keep an eye out for Warbond CCUs and try and upgrade from uh, ships that are always available. So you can pick up a sh upgrade to it at any point. Because it just, oh, pardon me, it makes life so much easier if, uh, say, five months down the line, you have a wee bit of disposable income and you want to get to that ship. Like, say right now, say I wanted to get... To the Zeus. At the moment, I don't have the starter for this thing. I've got to an LT LTI is one thing we have to talk about. We have to talk about LTI. I'll talk about that in a second. Just so I remembered. And I forgot my last point now. Oh yeah, like five months time, I wanted to try the Zeus. Um... And I had this chain fully built all the way up to the Zeus. I just hadn't applied it apart from maybe like this Razor. One of the reasons the Razor is the ship I chose to upgrade here is because it is always available. So I could just take the Storm. I've got a wee bit extra money disposable. And I could just upgrade the Storm to the Razor. Assuming the Storm isn't more expensive than the Razor now. I doubt it is. Um, and then boom I can just straight upgrade to the Zeus Mark II from the Razor. And I could just do that with just raw money without, uh, I'd take a, I wouldn't be saving any money on that upgrade there, but it's just still an option I have if I just really wanted to try that Zeus Mark II right now and I had the disposable income just sitting there. But yes, LTI, last thing we want to talk about. LTI is this funny thing, like everyone in the community, I've even made a meme of it before with a uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, but everyone in the community is pretty much on the same wavelength, they don't really think LTI is going to be important, we doubt it's ever going to be important, but we still want it, we still, we, every ship must have it, I don't think it's that important, but every ship must have it. So that's why it's a to be bought LTIT I've put here, and that means token. So what I mean by an LTI token is uh, you can't get this anymore on your starter pack because 
they don't have LTI war bond upgrades anymore. They used to back in the day, which is how my starter pack got LTI, but they don't do them anymore. So that's something that sucks. New people to the game, I probably recommend you just have your little super cheap as possible starter ship, and uh, if you if everyone has to have LTI, this is. And then what you do is then you buy LTI tokens and upgrade them instead if you want it to have LTI because it is basically impossible to get LTI on your starter game package now. Unless one thing that they might do one day is release a, the ability to buy a game package without a ship. That would be a really useful thing. And then I would recommend you get that, then buy an LTI token and upgrade it to the ship you want, saving as much money as you can along the way. Um, but what an LTI token is basically is a the storm might be no the storm I doubt the initial variant of the storm will have it at the moment but the uh, AA version definitely will and it's when a ship originally first gets concepted it always has LTI so when they're like boom this is the new ship for the uh, IAE the little new this ship or the little new that ship and it's one of the reasons so many Drake cutters sold last year was because it was the LTI token of the month you bought a Drake cutter and that you then upgraded that to whatever you want it to be. So if I brought a Drake Cutter, that would be my LTI token. And because upgrades always have the insurance of the sh like uh, ships before, like even if you have special up war bond upgrades that have like 12 months insurance, 40 months insurance, you'll have that 40 months insurance and you'll have the LTI. It never deletes anything along the way. It's literally just the ship that has changed. So if I've got that little uh, Drake Cutter with LTI down here, when I upgrade it to the Galaxy, it'll still have LTI. Um, what is LTI? LTI, as I said at the start, is the thing that the community thinks is not that important, um, but we all, for some reason, we're obsessed with it and we all want to have it. It's sort of like a collector's item, so to speak. Um, what it actually does in game terms is we're... It is insurance forever. So if you've got 10 months insurance, you'll have 10 months insurance in game for free. If you've got LTI, you'll have lifetime insurance. So you will never run out of insurance. But we're not really sure how insurance is going to work. We're pretty sure LTI is going to be subpar insurance. We're pretty sure that LTI is only... If you think about real life examples, I'm sort of getting sidetracked here, but if you think about real life examples, you buy yourself a car... Um, and you get some insurance on it. But this insurance, one insurance, only insures uh, very, 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 very basics. So, like, uh, if you crash, they'll help you repair it, and that's about it. If you, it's destroyed, they'll help you replace it, and that's about it. But they don't cover, say, theft is a common one, in, at least in my country. If you've got just the basic cheap insurance, they won't cover theft. If it's stolen, you're on your own. Good luck! Um... So we're expecting LTI to be subpar, and it'll probably be just the ship, it won't protect components, it won't protect any upgrades you've done to the ship, it won't protect any cargo. So I am 99.9% .9 sure that most of the time we're flying around in Star Insurance, in Star Insurance, in Star Citizen, we're going to want full-blown insurance as well as our LTI. So we're probably going to be buying insurance anyway. Um, in game but when you've got a very expensive ship it is kind of just a good comfort blanket to know that if you ever really really fuck up and forget to buy insurance and it is like months overdue in Star Citizen and you're just out for a joyride on in your ship and you accidentally crash and blow up you're not just suddenly screwed having to buy it from scratch in game with your in game currency um, you, you will have just get it back for free i think it's just that sort of fear that it is possible that people know it's possible that they really really fudge up like even if you've got the like the 10 years insurance it's like possible after 10 years that you really really fudge up and you forget about it i think it's just it's that sort of comfort blanket though i'm sure 99 percent of us are going to be flying around with paid insurance 99 percent of the time on top unless it's something really cheapy we don't care about losing um, so yeah, it's just one of those things that I don't think it's going to be as big a deal as the community makes it out to be, but I think it's just one of those things we all like to have just as a comfort blanket. 
So there we go. We've spent half an hour, about 20 minutes longer than I thought I was going to, just talking about CCUs, just as a brief sort of, like, tutorial's probably not a right word, but a sort of uh, introduction to CCUs. Um, it wasn't really much a structured video, I just wanted to have a, like, like my discussion videos, I like to just turn on the camera and talk Star Citizen. I've, probably for this one though, I should have done it a bit differently in retrospect. Because it's a tutorial, I probably should have structured it a bit better. But I feel like coming onto the site, just having a talk about it, as though it's me and you are a pal, and me and you as in the viewer. And we're just literally just talking about it. If you've got any questions, throw them down below. Um, I'm more than happy to like walk anyone through, talk about the CCUs. I just love talking Star Citizen. So this was a good excuse for me to turn on the camera and just talk Star Citizen to use and hopefully help someone that is new to the game and just see like this is possible. Because a lot of people that are new, they don't realize. They'll come in and they'll be like, hey, bum, bada, bum, bada, bum. go to the pledge store. Because like, I know when I was new, uh, what am I doing? Pledge store. <laughs> when I know when I was new, I just came in and I seen like 400 pound ships and I was like, fudge that! And I bogged off for years and I kept on coming back every so often until eventually I watched some gameplay videos of Star Citizen and I was hooked. So I know most people don't realise it is possible to get these ships cheaper and most people think that you kind of have to. It's kind of because we're used to games like taking advantage of us and you need to pay real money to get all these things. It's not like that at all. Um, I came here to like look at some of the like more expensive ships. Yeah, like view all ships. Okay, that's not what I was. Were we in the pledge store still? All right, we're getting distracted. And we're talking about stuff that we're not meant to be. But yeah, hope you've all enjoyed this. Hope you found it helpful. Sorry, it was a wee bit rambly. I'll see you all next time. Bye, -zy bye.